Hi, welcome back to another episode of CMTV. I'm JD. And I'm Haley. Jay and I heard you won the Black History Month Award. Yes, Naya Bell and I won the Brookhaven Academic Excellence Award. The Town Award. of Brookhaven's Black History Commission chose to honor three of our seniors for academic excellence. Shout out to Jaden Keeley, Naya Pemberton, and Isabella Reed. Great job, guys. Hi, my name is Naya Pemberton. After graduation, I will attend a four-year institution where I plan to study communications. My name is Jaden Keeley. I attend Center Merchants High School. After graduation, I'm currently undecided as to where I will attend, but I plan on majoring in communications. Hi, my name is Isabella Reed. My junior year, I committed to play NCAA Division I Women's Lacrosse for Monmouth University. I will be majoring in health studies for the Physician's Assistant Program track. I am honored to be nominated for the Town of Brookhaven Black History Commission for the Academic Achievement of Excellence Award. Congrats. Keep on making us proud. Haley, did you hear we just finished up our basketball season? I did. How'd it go? Well, I could go on and on, but instead, I'll let Christian tell us how it went. The Center Ranch's boys basketball squad had yet another dominant season this year. With a 7-1 overall season record, along with going a perfect 5-0 in league play with wins over Wyandanch in the season opener, Shoreham Waiting River, Elwood, Hampton Bays, and Babylon. The team had many significant wins throughout the course of their season, including an 89-60 victory over Malvern and a 69-59 win against John Glenn. The team ended up defeating Shoreham Waiting River in the championship game 76-61 to claim the team's fourth consecutive league title. This is Sport Report on CMTV. Congrats, guys. Jane, aren't you excited that the fall sports are back? Yes, I couldn't be happier. And so are the coaches. Let's hear what they have to say about it. Um, so we're here with Coach Segreto. And so what are your, some of your expectations for this upcoming girls varsity soccer team? Well, since it's my first season, I want a lot of big wins. And I want the girls to grow um, individually as players. And I want our team growth throughout the season to get stronger and more compatible. Yeah, me too. Sounds good. Uh, so what are some of the regulations for this year's season? Well, we have the mask that we have to wear throughout the season as tolerated. Um, we're not allowed to shake hands with our opponents after games. We could wave. We could wave. We could wave. We'd wave from afar. Yeah, we could. Um, and throughout the games at the 20 minute mark of each half, they had to stop and get some water. We have to try to stay six feet apart as much as possible. And um, we're just lucky to be out on the field. So Leslie, are you excited for this year's season? I'm so excited. Um, it's my first year as a varsity coach. So I, it's been great so far and it's just the beginning. So I'm really excited for a great season. Yeah, me too. Woo! Hi, I'm Dominic from CMTV, interviewing Mr. Mishlow about the boys' cross country. Mr. Mishlow, can you give me a preview of, about the boys' cross country team? Well, sure. We are, we're ready to run again this season. It's a little bit different this time as we uh, the elements play a bigger factor into this. Um, we always start in this fall, which is usually generally warmer and drier. Now we're dealing with snow and cold and things that uh, we haven't quite gotten used to yet. But we open up today against Babylon uh, with the hopes of uh, taking that, that meet down and with a W. And we have some guys, we have a very young team. Our team is, consists of only one senior. The rest are all underclassmen, all of which have ran before with us. We have some new guys too, some new faces, and we hope that they'll become huge contributors to this season. So, Ms. Hassan, can you give me a preview on the girls' cross country? Sure. We have um, 17 girls, and I'm really excited because we have three, two seventh graders and one eighth grader. And so because we have such an interest, we're really excited. We should have a, a good competitive team, have a lot of fun. Sounds like everyone's happy to be back. Hey, Jaden, how was your St. Patrick's Day? It was great. I learned some new facts with Sam and Seb. Let's check out how that went. I'm Seb. And I'm Sam. And we're from CMTV. Today we're going to be interviewing people all about St. Patrick's Day. Let's go check them out. <laughs> so what do you usually do for St. Patrick's Day? Um, St. Patrick's Day is actually my mom's birthday, so I usually have a birthday dinner and just spend a lot of time with my family. Oh, well, that's really nice. Um, do you, what do you usually wear on St. Patrick's Day? Uh, green. Wear a lot of green. That's good. So, uh, what do you usually do for uh, St. Patrick's Day? Um, sometimes me and my family go out to dinner because my we have a family friend who's very Irish, so he likes to celebrate also. So. Oh wow, that's really cool. Um, have you ever found a four-leaf clover? No. 
I have. <laughs> what drink is most popular on St. Patrick's Day? Shamrock shakes. Never thought of that one. Hi, it's Abby and Latuma. What's up? We're here with um, the host of CMTV, Seb, Sam, and Dom, and we're going to ask them questions. Okay, so have you ever found a four-leaf clover? I have not. Yeah, I have. I have not. I guess we've never been lucky enough to go. I personally have found one. Have you? No. Oh, that's a shame. Um, so what do you do to spend your St. Patrick's Day? Uh, I usually go to St. Patrick's Day Parade in town. Yeah, I go to the parade too. I hang out with my family. Nothing really. My family isn't really... I, we don't really have traditions for St. Patrick's Day. <laughs> do you want to ask me a question, Mr. Nope. No, thank okay. you. Okay. <laughs> um, we're going to end this off with what color do you wear on St. Patrick's Day? Green. Yeah, mostly blue, I think. <laughs> I'm colorblind, so I don't know. <laughs> I wear green because... Irish green. Or I wear orange because that's in the flag as well. What about you? Your hair's on fire. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> okay. Bye, guys. That was fun. Serena and Che also did some St. Patrick's Day baking. So let's see what they bake. That was fun. Now let's check in with Dennis and Dominic, see what the brew crew is up to. So how does the brew crew work? The brew crew works by a link that's sent out to the middle school and high school staff members. What is the process? The high school and middle school staff members click on the link and they answer a bunch of questions on the Google survey, which asks what kind of coffee they would like, creamers they want, sugars, what room number, and what day they would like their coffee. Sounds interesting. How many different flavors do you offer? We offer a variety of flavors. We have French vanilla, hazelnut, caramel macchiato, half and half, milk, and skim milk. How long does it take to deliver the coffee for? Usually the coffee is delivered within the first 10 minutes of the, of the periods. Please tell me you offer anything else besides coffee. Yes, we do. We offer decaf coffee, iced coffee, green tea, black tea, and hot chocolate. Sounds delicious. Thank you. Love the brew crew. Well, that's going to wrap up this episode of CMTV. I'm JD. And I'm Haley. Don't forget to follow us on Instagram and subscribe to our YouTube at Center TV.